Look. Look, here we are. These are star anise. Now, years ago, I don't know if they're still there, but in the Sydney Botanical Gardens, there are star anise trees. Star anise trees. Now, there are two sorts of star anise trees. One is poison and one is not. This is the, this is the sort that they use in uh, cooking that you'll find from your Asian cook, cookery shop. And, um, well, the fact is, if star anise trees grow in the Sydney Botanical Gardens, it means that they can, uh, every, all Sydney ciders can grow um, their own star anise. They don't have to buy it, do they? They can have a star anise tree in their, uh, in, well, uh, street trees or in their front yard or their backyard or in their parks and gardens. Problem is, though, as I said, there are two sorts. According to Wikipedia, there are two sorts of star anise, the Japanese star anise tree and the Chinese star anise tree. These are the Chinese star anise trees which are edible. The uh, Japanese star anise tree causes um, neurological problems. It can cause seizures and it can cause kidney kidney problems, kidney damage and stuff. So read all about it if you ever want to grow your own star anise. You want to know what you're doing, uh, you know. Well, that's the Sydney Botanical Gardens. Ah, star anise, beautiful in a in a co with coconut milk in a curry and an okra curry. Make your own okra, Winfrey and Brian Gumbo, with uh, star anise and uh, coconut milk and chili and okra. Yummy. Um, in 1976, I was walking through the uh, Sydney Botanical Gardens, just five or ten minutes walk beyond the Opera House, and. Uh, there used to be this old herb garden. It was abandoned, you know, it was completely run down and it was covered in balloon vine. And uh, I thought, I'll go in here and <laughs> I'll go in here and have a look. And to my surprise, I found lemongrass growing. So, what this means is every Sydney cider can be growing their own lemongrass. This was an abandoned garden in Sydney, just behind the Opera House, five minutes walk. And there was a uh, uh, just lemongrass growing. Lemongrass. It means every Sydney cider can grow their own lemongrass. They don't have to go to the health food shop to get, uh, or the Asian supply shop to get uh, lemongrass tea. They can just grow their own. They can. Uh, they don't have to go to the Asian uh, grocery section to get fresh lemongrass to use in their Asian cooking. They don't. Beautiful grass. Beautiful lemon scent. Lovely. You can grind it, you can do all sorts of things with it. It's lovely. Every Sydney cider can be growing their own. It just goes to show how how psychologically we are dependent are on <laughs> going to Woolworths or, you know, the big supermarkets. What else grows in the Sydney Botanical Gardens that I can remember? Oh, aloe vera. Now, aloe vera, for example, that's... Uh, well, it's been used for thousands of years as an emollient or lotion to treat burns. It's beautiful stuff. You just break off a piece of aloe vera and break it open and all this green jelly will come out. And it's just so <laughs> so beautiful a lotion. I wouldn't you I wouldn't put it in I don't know about the toxicity of aloe vera, but it's been used certainly as an external application on skin for what thousands of years. I wouldn't put it in my mouth. I wouldn't put it in my vagina. I wouldn't put it in my rectum because I don't know enough about it, but well, it's a beautiful skin lotion, you know. It's lovely. Try it. It's just like <laughs> it's just like jelly. It's <laughs> it's beautiful. They don't. I did have one here, but it was killed by the frost. They don't like heavy frost. They'll grow in Sydney well, very drought resistant, but they don't like heavy frost. I should have had mine under a veranda where the frost couldn't get to it. Lots of things grow in Sydney, you know. I'm in I'm inland where it's dry in summer and super hot, and it's. Uh, very cold and frosty in winter, which can burn a lot of tropical things. But you can get away with a lot of uh, tropicals in Sydney. I knew someone in Woolloomooloo in Sydney who had a, a custard apple growing and it actually fruited. I was walking around Paddington and Darlinghurst. I've seen the odd mango tree, you know. A friend of ours in Woolara gave us uh, some ripe mangoes that he'd grown in his backyard. I've seen pawpaws and tree tomatoes. You can get away with a lot of subtropicals and tropicals in Sydney. It's lots of fun. The streets should be paved with fruit. Oh, macadamia trees too, yes. But this, the Sydney streets could be paved with uh, macadamia trees. Macadamias are from New South Wales and Queensland. And um, 
I've actually got a macadamia tree here, but it doesn't grow because it's very drought resistant, but it just doesn't grow. It stays the same size pretty much year after year. Without water, it won't grow, but it's quite frost resistant too. Yes, Sydney could grow all its macadamias, but what does it do? We import them from Hawaii or, or Queensland or somewhere. Yes, macadamias, beautiful tree. I think I'd better go.